One month now. Five to go. And I found myself in a predicament. I am enjoying my time with Fang. Most of the time, just talking about stupid shit. Like our love for wire foo and comedy movies. We are both ventriloquist. 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 We are both ventriloquist and we practice every day. He carries a basket. He carries a paper roll. And we don't help sis. But there is one thing for sure, my friends. We are ventriloquist. Almost every day now, I'm either at her desk helping her in science, or working on a lab with her. Or she's sat next to me decrypting the mystical arts of not sucking at music. I'm talking more with her than anyone I've ever talked with. Not to mention lunch and after school. It's less hiding from the Tangerine Tyrant and Nasser these days, and more spending time with Fang and Reed. Even if he's constantly checked out, or smells of burnt skunk. The fuck is he on, anyway? Let's car bro. What? car fentanyl. Whatever. Fang and the gang <laughs> are pretty all right. Trish, though. Every day she gives me the same look of distrust and a put-upon sigh. As if I'm some kind of chore to deal with. Whatever. It's not like she matters in the long run. But I find myself having these weird thoughts lately. Like, is any of this real or not? I tumble backwards off of the stage. Bro, that sucks. It's lunchtime now, and I guess I dozed off. Too many late night study sessions. You like, need help? <sighs> Just fix the projector, Reed. Okay, almost done. I hobble to my feet. Feeling out the bruise blossoming on my shoulder. Oh, stupid fucking stage. I consider jumping back up, but find the stairs up more appealing. Going up the stairs, Trish grabs my shoulder, pinning it to the wall. She leans in close, looking me dead in the eyes. Uh, can I help you? Don't play dumb. Something's up with Fang today. She gestures to where Fang is sitting. Fang's picking at her lunch with a fork, not eating a bite. Now that I think about it, she has been a bit distant today. They've been like this since band practice yesterday. Wait, what? Did you do something to them? do something? What does she mean? She doesn't think that Fang and I... Oi! What? No! I... I don't think, at least. Why are you so concerned? Everyone has a bad day every now and then, right? Fang and I have been friends for ten years now. Not once have I seen them this upset. You're the only new thing around here. It can't be anyone else. So, what did you do? I swear I haven't done anything with Fang. Look, we've got music next. I'll ask Fang what's up then. Trish glowers. We both glance over at Fang to see her still sitting there, her food untouched. You'll talk with Fang? You'll probably make it worse. I should be the one to talk with them. So why haven't you? Trish's mouth shuts with a click. I stare her down. Her eyes harden, and she finally speaks. Fine, but you better not fuck up. She lets go of my shoulder, stuffing her hands in her jacket pockets with a huff. I finally return to where I was sitting on the stage to continue finishing my lunch. 
Right when I plant myself on the ground, Reed speaks up. And... done. Done? Oh, with the projector? That's right, man. Now we can watch movies, shows, pornos, all that. We're not watching porn in school. Not with that attitude. Trish throws an orange slice at me. So, what do you guys want to watch? Mm, I can't think of anything that would be appropriate around normal high schoolers. Trish raises her hand and jumps in place. Ooh, how about The Count of Monte Cristo? Oh, I know that one. The actors in that one are pretty great. Oh yeah, I love the VA work. Trish and Reed stop and stare at me. Crap. Was it something I said? What are- Saved by the bell! I looked to Fang and- Oh, when did she leave? Oh, Fang already left. I'll go catch up to her. Bye. I make record time out of the auditorium, leaving a still confused Trish and Reed. Fang isn't in music class when I get there. I tap out a quick message to her on my phone. I take a spot next to her seat and wait. Maybe she just needed to use the bathroom. It's been about 20 minutes. I'm starting to get worried. Something's up with Fang today. Hmm. I looked at my phone and the message I sent her way just before class started. Still unseen? You better not fuck up. God damn it. Mr. Jingo, I need to use the bathroom. One guitar-shaped bathroom pass later, I'm scrambling through the halls. If I were a non-binary teenage pterodon having a crisis, where would I hide? Some place only Fang would go. The family bathrooms. There are only two in the building. I sprint to the first bathroom, closer to the back of the school, nestled away in the special needs area. My knuckles wrap against the door, locked and preoccupied. Fang, you're missing class, and I seriously need help with this sheet music. The one you seek is elsewhere. Who the fuck? Wait. You're that weird stego chick. Stella? That's very rude. And I'm not weird. Whatever. Do you know where Fang is? Not here. Can you please leave? I have a nervous black. I turn away from the door and sprint to the front of the school where the other bathroom is. It's while I'm moving briskly through the empty corridors of the school with untuned guitar in hand that I find divine providence. Or rather, the feathers floating by the window provide me with the clue I need. I look out the window, and while I can't look up to see for sure, the shadow that she is casting on the ground below is enough verification required. My feet climb the steps easily, but my mind is ill at ease. The hell is wrong with me right now? Why do I feel anxious? What did you do? What if I did do something? Fang and I have been friends for ten years now. I've known her for barely a month. And why is it my problem to fix? Not once have I seen them this upset. I 
Can't stop the gnawing feeling in my chest. I'm at the door to the roof now. It's shut, but by the handle, I notice a piece of cardboard tucked between the door and frame, keeping the latch open. <laughs> Good job, dork. Damn it all. Fang's problems first. Then I can figure out my chest. Gently open the door. I shade my eyes. The door clicks shut behind me. Oh, shit. Who's the... Uh, non? What's with the guitar? Fang is sitting atop the stair enclosure, looking down on me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Jingo's hall pass. I, uh, kind of need help with sheet music again. Wow. You really suck at music. Yeah. I really do. I find the ladder easily enough and climb on top of the tiny hut. Around Fang are scattered feathers. You all right? The feather- Cleaning. What? Fang sighs. She holds one of her wings and gently brushes her fingers through the feathers. I'm preening my wing. She winces. A feather drifts to the floor. That looks painful. A little. I sit down next to her and look out at Vol Caldera Bluff. It's a beautiful view. It's a distraction. You ever... You ever feel like you just don't matter? Fang stares at the vista of Vol Caldera, but her eyes are vacant. I feel like no matter what I do, I'll never be able to make something. I try and try, but nobody likes the ways I express myself. Not once. After all the work I put into worm drama, has anyone ever told me it was good? Her eyes wetten, her voice roughens, her shoulders quake. Nobody's ever said, That was great, Thing. Oh, can I get a copy of that last sum on CD? <laughs> I've been playing music since I was basically in diapers. <sighs> and all I have to show for it is a shit reputation. Her hand curls into a fist. Her nails bite into her palm, uh, and I can clearly see the minute trickle of blood. How much harder do I have to try to get people to notice me? Her fist crashes down on the concrete. Even my own parents! When Dad looks at me, it's what you see the lost cause! Oh, then it's the same team. Better focus on the one that isn't broken so we all screw up again! She punctuated her shouts with her fist, striking the roof beneath her. Her fist lands softly one final time, uncurling to reveal the bleeding grooves her sharp nails have left. Watching her break apart like this, it's causing the dull pain in my chest to intensify. Why can't it be popular like him? <sighs> Fang deflates completely, all her anger gone, replaced with melancholy. Master doesn't even have to try at all. Even crippled, just breezes through life. Why does he get stray haze? Why does he get my parents' admiration? I had to be a burden on everyone. She grabs her knees and buries her face in her lap. The worst part is, you can't even hate me. She picks her head up. Rivulets of tears and orange eyeliner run down her cheeks and leave bright stains on her knees. I keep telling him to fuck off every day. And he'll still be there the next. 
Nothing fucking happened. He's a constant reminder of everything I can't be. He's a goddamn boy scout. A little Mr. Perfect. And I'll always be in his fucking shadow. We can't just change. Just magic we get better at everything. Even if someone like Nasser tries to help it. It's clear he wants to. But the sheer difference between us. It, it will never happen. But my brother tries. He's always trying. He just fucks up. Every fucking time. <sighs> she wipes a tear with one of her hands, but leaves a bloody smudge instead. Asher knows who he is. I, I don't even know what I am. Do I step in now? Who am I, damn it? <sighs> I can only define myself by the things I'm not. I'm not a good band player. I'm not a good sibling. I'm not a good friend. I'm not a good person. My mind is a fucking mess. In my head, it's all my thoughts. They're all fucking foggy. Half the time, I'm hating myself. <laughs> am I who I say I am? Maybe... Oh, really? The other half, I'm daydreaming of being something special. That I'm different from everyone. Above them. I know more than them. They're both lies. I'm fucking lying to myself, but... It's like I'm just here to be a drain on myself and on others. I'm stuck with myself. I can't just drop everything and try other things now. It's just too late for that. There's too many ways to fuck up. <laughs> Music is the only thing I've ever been decent at. Even then. She looks at me desperately, at a loss for words. I, I don't know what to say. Well, why would you say anything? Here, I am begging for help, and you haven't said a word. You're always so sure of yourself. Yet here you are, listening to me in a crisis, and you can't say anything! Fang grips my jacket with both hands, digging in. What is it you have that I don't? What is it you want from me? What is it I want from you? When you got here a few weeks ago, you were just some nobody kid without friends who lives on financial assistance. She's shaking my arm around. And now everyone I know is friends with you. You have no talents. No specific knowledge anywhere. No real personality. What is it with you that you can lack an identity but know exactly who you are? Uh, honestly, I... don't know. What? I don't know how to say it. All I know is I'm me. You're... Uh, you? I struggle to find the right words. Fang stares pleadingly. Eventually, she buries her eyes in my jacket arm. It's like, uh... I don't know. You're trying to be something you're not. It needs to happen naturally. Fang looks up from my arm. But naturally. If you're forcing this, whatever, then it's like some misplaced idea or like a refusal to leave the comfort zone. Uh, 
what I'm trying to say is... I ended up trying to be someone else, too. To the point that I rejected who I really was. And started to really fuck myself up. I'm not about making others notice me or being great at something. I just do what makes me... me. Uh, I'm the only one here and I think it's safe to assume there's several of you. Like you don't know, you, you said it yourself. Her fingers tighten around my arm. I'm not certain she's breathing right now. And there's tons of different people going through what you are right now. Trying to force their own egos. Only to reject who they really are. Not to undermine your feelings or anything. And at the end of it all, I've accepted that I am and will always be me. You see? I have to figure it out myself. Fang's grip loosens. She puts her hands around her knees and lowers her head. Her expression is one of complete resignation. I don't... I can't do anything on my own. How am I supposed to do something like this? You aren't alone. I'm here. Reed and Trish are here. You already know Nazar wants to help. It doesn't need to be all at once. Fang looks back to me and gives a sad smile. All right. She tries to dry her tears again, only to smudge her face with more blood and makeup. I remove my jacket and offer the sleeve to her. She sniffles, then grabs it to wipe her eyes. It's laundry day anyways. After returning my jacket, Fang looks to me again with a somber smile. Why did you come up here? It's nice up here. Quiet. But why? And why alone? To think. Maybe to throw myself a pity party. Why? I do this every year. Up here? Nah. Just somewhere I can be alone. Every year, though? Since I was 11. Jeez. What happened? I, uh... broke Nasser's wing. Uh, my foot tastes extra salty today. We used to be really close. He looked up to me. I was supposed to watch him. I'm his big sister, after all. He had asked if... he could really fly. Fang stretches out her wings to highlight that. I said, of, of course. I looked away for a second and then it happened. He jumped off the bluff. Her eyes become distant and I can only guess just how vividly she's reliving this moment of her past. I watched as he jumped, as he bounced off the cliff and into the water. Climbed down as fast as I could, hoping to God he wasn't dead. The current. Dad and the lifeguard had to go in because the current was too strong. And Mom came with the medic. <laughs> Nasser was. I thought he was dead. Covered in blood. <sighs> Limbs mangled. My baby brother, just nine years old, had jumped off the bluff, thinking he could fly. Fang's eyes grow wet again. Without a second thought, I draw her into a hug, comforting her. Her voice is muffled by my jacket, but she continues. I'm why his wing is a fucking mess. I did it! So why... Why doesn't he hate me? 
Fang's still family. Because you're his sister. Fang flinches in my arms, but doesn't pull away. You're the one that's hurting Fang, not Nazar. I surprised myself there. I honestly don't know how I managed this conversation. I let go of Fang and lean back, giving her more space. Her breathing is evening out, and she looks far more composed now. I'm sorry for what I said earlier. Huh? About how you're a nobody. <laughs> you're pretty much right. Maybe, but I shouldn't have put it so harshly. All this time, I thought people like you were... Useless? Um, I, something like that. But here you are, proving me wrong time and time again. I get what you mean. I could say the same to you as well. <laughs> I've been breaking your rules like you've been breaking mine. Maybe we're both just useless nobodies. She chuckles to herself. Hey, can I see that? Fang points at my oversized hall pass. Yeah, sure. She takes it from my hands, our fingers brushing for a second. She blushes while she handles the acoustic bathroom pass. I think... Uh, I think I finally got the tune, Anon. Tune? She finishes tuning the guitar and tests it. With a nod of satisfaction, Fang begins strumming. The rhythm is slow and the tone is soft, enough so that her humming blends perfectly with it. I lean back, bobbing my head along to the impromptu music. The streaks from her tears that had once marred her pretty face only help to highlight her soft smile now. I hum along now too, which causes Fang to giggle. The rhythm is slowing to a crawl, the song about to end. With a meteor coming soon, everyone's going to die. So I'll say to everyone, goodbye, Volcano High. The lyrics surprise me, but I shrug it off. Uh, you ready to get up? Feng nods and wipes her tears one last time with her forearm. I stand and pop my back, looking out over the fence at the ground below. From here I can see the afternoon sun starting to encroach on the skyline of the small coastal town. Turning to Fang, I crouch a bit and extend my hand to her. She moves her bloody hand to take it, but hesitates. She softly grasps my hand. She winces in pain. You know, it's strange. I expected the alarms to go off again, but... This feels different, somehow. More natural. I'm careful to hoist her to her feet, mindful of her injured palm. But her beak accidentally bumps into my cheek on her way up. Ah, there they are. Fang's eyes contract, and she instinctively hops backwards, covering her muzzle with her hands and turning her head away in her flusteration. I clench my lower jaw and look at my palm, slick with sweat and her blood. The silence continues for an immeasurable amount of time. <laughs> so that's how dinos kiss. <laughs> Fuck, 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 fuck. Ah, uh, not really. Ha ha. Uh huh. Uh huh. I look for something, anything, to end this awkwardness. Like the guitar hall pass. Wait. 
I check my phone, seeing that Mr. Jingo's class will be ending in ten minutes. Fuck, the assignment. Fang finally looks my way again, though her face is still flush. What? Mr. Jingo's assignment. There's no way in hell I'll be able to do it at home. <laughs> Fang's hands try to cover her beak, failing horribly to contain her giggles. <laughs> God, you really suck at music. I glare at her. Huh, why don't you just drop it? It's an elective anyway. Because I need to maintain my GPA for college. Because I kind of like it. I blush and look down to the entrance of the roof below us. Hmm. Maybe I'll help you. Fang hops down, her wings easing her landing. I owe you for the fucking therapy session anyway. Oh, thank fuck. I climb down the ladder. Those wings must be really convenient. Who the fuck is up here? I know someone is ditching up here. My hunted instincts can tell. Ooh, double fuck! Uh... You! Principal Spears looks at us, finger pointed at me as if to fire a special beam cannon through my chest. In all my goddamned years, on top of the roof, explain. Now! Bullshit mode, activate! I got lost looking for the bathroom. Spears incinerates me on the spot. Astra season? For a brief instant, I picture Fang in a bikini. Hot. Fang gets a similar stare and withers down. I'm not stupid. Tarot estrus season isn't for another few months. Empty your pockets, now. I reduced myself to Hoover flags. All I had on me was my phone and a ratty wallet, held together with hot glue and duct tape. Fang does the same, dropping her own phone, a spare guitar pick, and an unopened pack of cigarettes. Spears looks at Fang dead in the eyes, rips the package open, and stuffs every cigarette in his mouth at once. To our mortified stares, he chews them until they are a brown glob and spits it over the fence, landing on a rather oriental-looking car. Anon, go to class. Now. Fang, to the nurses. I look to Fang one last time. She looks a mess. Her wings are ragged, feathers misaligned and a clear patch of them missing on one. Stains on her legs from her makeup, tears and blood. Drying blood on her hands, arms and beak. Eyes puffy and red from crying. But her smile was I wave her goodbye and wordlessly return to class. I only have a few minutes, but I can't focus on the assignment. I'll have to take it home as homework. Hmm. Maybe I'll help you. I take out my phone and consider messaging Fang again. My heart thumps roughly in my chest. Just what is with me today? All this drama. When did my life become a soap opera? Heh, <laughs> even included a dramatic kiss. I look at my hand, her blood now dried and dusty on my palm. Did that count as a kiss? I mean, it was unintentional. She backed off and all. 
Jeez, my insides feel like liquid. Surely that's just my disgusted reaction to Spear's scare tactic up there. Nah, this isn't fear. Unlike a bottomless pit, the feeling is... Pleasant. Yeah, I kinda like it. Hmm. I wonder if Fang... The feeling intensifies. But why? I only thought of... It's not as if she... But... Do I like Fang? Fuck. <laughs>